good men need scars. There's a great story about this. One of the things I loved about writing this book was just doing the research of good men. Like what do what do good men look like in the day, right? Uh, and there's a gentleman uh, that was named as Gentleman Jack. He was a boxer. His name was James Corbett. They nicknamed him Gentleman Jack. Uh, and, in, and in 1892, uh, he was set to face a guy named John Sullivan. Now, John Sullivan was like the man. Like, dude, he was like he was the man. He was the greatest fighter to that day. Um, he had a reputation. This is back in the day when they had bare knuckle fights as well, too. Brutal. Uh, unbelievably. <laughs> I just can't even imagine. Right. And so he was set to fight him in the world championship. Now, when he stepped into the ring, he knew exactly who he was facing, right? He looked at his opponent, opponent and he saw the scars. You know, John Sullivan, uh, who was really nicknamed, he was nicknamed the man, but he was also nicknamed the Boston Strong Strongman. Hey, you don't get a name like that for being a weak <laughs> dude, right? There was a fight that he had. They went 61 rounds. And finally, the corner man had to stop the fight because both of him and his opponent were so bloodied and so absolutely beat up that neither one of them could lift up their arms. I mean, just imagine like getting into a fight that you that you would never quit, but you didn't know how to stop, right? He also had another one. This is an awesome story of he was fighting this guy named Killian, and this was actually a bare knuckle fight. He was in France where it was highly illegal, so they had to go to the secret place. And on the 44th round, it looked like John was gonna to lose this fight, right? He goes to the corner, he throws up, he gets himself repositioned again, and he went 31 rounds. Killian's corner man had to stop the fight because of the brutal beating that John had put on. And this is all well known, right? Yeah. And so when Corbett got into the ring, he knew that that's the guy that he was facing. Now Corbett at that time in his career had not fought a lot of fights. He had not fought, uh, John Sullivan had fought in his career 454 fights. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable what these guys would do in an entire, they'd fight hundreds of fights a year, right? But Corbett had not done that, but he had had a lot of success. He was 30 pounds lighter than John, and he was also shorter than him too. So he knew he had this uphill, uphill battle, right? But he knew that he had scars because he had got himself to this position to become a world champion. So when they both got into this ring, I gotta imagine that both of them knew not only did they have scars personally, but the scars that the other man brought to the table too. And what it did is it gave them this sense of defeat is not impossible, but it's gonna be so worth it, mm. right? And so as the men stepped into that arena, they went back and forth and it was a awesome fight. I mean, just hits and knockdowns, punches and knockdowns. And finally in the 21st round, Corbett landed a vicious left hook knocked down Sullivan, who never got it. And he won the championship. And the, the fight was later punned the day the man beat the man. And so there's always somebody that we're fighting as men. But are we willing to get the scars? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to go out there and get the scars? And a lot of it is we think about like these internal scars that we have to deal with. But I will say that it's also the exterior scars. You know, on the trip, when we climbed the Grand, I was waiting for an opportunity to get a scar <laughs> because I wanted to be able to say, yeah, you see that scar right there on my forearm, right there. That was when a rock came down and it got me and you know, like, like, pushed me into that rock. Exactly, right? <laughs> I was looking for an opportunity to get an exterior scar so we could talk about 